The four pieces that make up the base are cut so they raise in the middle when joined to make the pyramid shape. 12 inch wide material is being used here so the slope will be 12 inches and the base slightly less. A 12 inch line above an 11 and a half inch line gives a nice slope. This makes each piece an isosceles triangle with a height of 12 inches and a base of 23 inches. The stock for the base is a piece of quarter inch plate 12 inches wide and 5 feet long. A line is placed every 11 and a half inches making a triangle with a height of 12 inches and a base of 23 inches. This will provide the four pieces needed for the base. An angle iron is clamped to the piece at just the right offset from the line. This helps guide the plasma cutter in a nice straight line. And now there's four pieces rough cut for the base. Next, a little grinding to clean up the edges of the base pieces and knock the dross off the back. And a little more fine tuning. With the four pieces laying flat, you can see how the tops of the triangle are just a little less than 90 degrees. They close up when the center is raised. Here I'm using welding magnets and a square to set the base pieces for tacking. With the edges square and the center up a bit, you can see how the gap comes together. Because of the angles, adjusting one affects the alignment of the others. Trial and fit until it's good. It needs just a little tweaking with a pipe clamp. Now it's all tacked and ready for finish welding. You can see the pyramid shape clearly. The pieces are welded solid a portion at a time to avoid warping. The joints are all welded solid and ready to be ground down smooth. The welds are ground down flush, then the grinder marks are smoothed out with a flat disc. The corners are marked for drilling and insulation of the levelers. I'll mark the holes first with a prick punch, then a center punch. Drilling through the welds is a little tougher than the steel plate, but it's doable. The pilot hole is drilled first, then to the final size, which is 3 eighths. The same thing is done for all four corners. It's always good to have plenty of drill bits.
An angle iron with a bolt holds the nuts square and in just the right spot for welding. A tap is run through the nuts to clean up the threads. The welding table is leveled to the base that's level and a level can be used to set the post vertical. A line is traced onto the upright so it can be trimmed to fit the base. A little grinding and it's just right. A tape measure and level are used to mark the upright post so it can be cut off at just the right spot. That's a stand height of 36 inches placing the grinder's tool rest at 42 inches. The upright is tacked in place then welded solid. The top plate is cut out of one of the scrap pieces from the base. Using the dividers, I can measure the hole spacing, then mark and drill the holes. Top plate is set in place, tacked and welded. It's starting to look like a grinder stand now. The metal surfaces are ground and sanded to prep for primer. A little bondo makes the transition from the base to the upright nice and smooth. Here it's sanded and ready to be wiped down and given a coat of primer.
Once the primer is dry, a coat of paint is applied. The levelers are cut to length and slotted so they can be adjusted from above with a screwdriver. This makes it easy to keep the stand sitting nice and solid. Here's how the adjuster works. We've got just a little rocking in here. And we can very easily adjust this from above with a screwdriver with that slot in there. And now we've got a very solid, solid base. I'm pretty pleased how this turned out. It's very solid. It's, it's, it's about 23 inches square. It's very big for an 8 inch grinder, but that's okay. It's very solid. If you like this kind of stuff, leave a comment, give me a thumbs up, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.